you would have often seen that at schools, colleges, and even at workplaces. There are certain websites that are blocked. For example, social networking websites. Well, wasting time is one of those reasons, but security is also a very big concern. And the reverse is also true. Let us say there is a network that is only accessible within a certain organization. Then it is not possible that anyone in the world can connect to those servers, right? You have to configure a certain VPN or a certain proxy to get to that network, right? So in this video, we are going to discuss a little bit about what proxies are. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. To put it in a very generic term, a proxy is nothing but an intermediate that sits between your client and the server. So this intermediate or middleman, this is responsible for handling all of the requests and responses. So naturally, there will be a question, why do you even need this person? Well, that is because when you're designing a system that is huge and they want to handle millions of users, then you want a good control on what requests are coming to your system and who are you giving those responses to? Because think about it. You do not want that you will send out information that is not intended for a certain user. And certainly you do not want to take up a lot of information that was not even needed for you. So this is where proxies come into the picture. So before diving deeper, let us do a quick recap about what all do we already know. So when it comes to system design, we have understood why is it essential and where is it in your career path. After that, we understood what is scaling and its importance. Then we went over all of the basic fundamentals like a client server model, the load balancer, what is caching, what are databases, and then how do you connect all of these components? How do you start creating those diagrams actually? And now we are discussing some of the optimizations that you can make in your system. And that is where we discussed indexing. The best part is while discussing all of it, we have been able to relate all of this to an example of a physical bookstore because you see that in real life and then connecting everything becomes very, very easy and it sticks to your mind. So taking back our example of the bookstore, let us say you come to this bookstore and now you want to look up for a book. You go into the bookstore, but you don't find it. So what will you generally do? You will go up to the cashier and then you will ask, Hey, is this book available? So this cashier, they may check up the book in the inventory and it is possible that this book is just not present on the shelves. So in such a scenario, what does the cashier do? The cashier will ask one of their staff members to go and look into the warehouse or at the back of the bookstore. And then they are gonna fetch that book for you. So what just happened over here? This cashier, this cashier acted kind of a middleman, right? They do not want that you go into this warehouse and fetch the book. There can be problems, right? You can see what's going on. You can see the organization. You can see what is there in the inventory. So you see the problem, right? That is why this cashier acted as a proxy and they asked a certain staff member to go and fetch the book for you. This way you were able to take care of the request that came in and you were able to control the response as well. So it is giving you so many benefits. It is more secure and you are able to handle the request in an efficient manner as well. So that is what the bare bone of a proxy is. That means you are delegating your request to someone else and then the task is being performed by someone else. When it comes to computer applications, this is what happens in a typical scenario. You have all of these clients and they are connected to the internet. And now they can access any of these resources that are publicly available to you. And these resources could be anything. It could be malicious sites. It could be the dark web. It could be social network sites. It can be anything, right? You get the idea. So what do you want? You want some kind of a control that all of these users are accessing based upon what rules and parameters that you have set. So this is where the concept of a forward proxy comes in. Now think like this, you have all of your clients and you can assume that all these clients are in some sort of a private network. That means they all are accessing the internet, let's say from a school or let's say from any workplace. 
Now, what happens in case of a forward proxy is, instead of directly connecting to the internet, all of these clients will connect to a proxy server. And this proxy server is connected to the internet and they take care of all of the requests that are coming in. And based upon the rules that you have specified, you can allow that, okay, if it is a work based thing, I will allow the connection. But if it is something like a social network website or a gaming website, then you can simply decline it. Then what will happen? You won't be able to access these resources. So what were you able to do? You were able to manage all of your content just by using this forward proxy, right? You might not realize, but a forward proxy gives you a lot more benefits than just blocking all of your content. So think like this, all these clients are making the request to this proxy server, right? So now you can log all of these requests and this becomes very helpful when you have to audit that, okay, what person is trying to access what content? So definitely logging is a very good aspect when it comes to forward proxy. The another benefit that you get is traffic control. You know that you are serving all of these clients. So you have a very good idea that what is the influx of requests and based upon your capacity, you can decide if the request has to go through or do you want to block it. That is how all of these organizations try to manage their bandwidth and they can ensure that all of the clients are getting equally served because it should not be possible that one person is using up all of the bandwidth while other people are experiencing the internet to be very slow. So this is another advantage. The third advantage that you can get is encryption. You can make sure that whatever request you forward to all of the resources on the internet, you can encrypt the incoming request and then forward it. So this gives you a security benefit as well because it is not necessary that all of these clients, they are accessing these resources in a secure manner, but defining a proxy server, you can take care of it. And since this proxy server is responsible for all of the requests that are going to the public internet, it can control what information is being sent to all of these servers. Think like this, all of these resources, they don't have any knowledge like who are all my clients? All they know is that my requests are coming from this particular server. So what is it giving you? It is kind of giving you an anonymity to all of these clients. Now, while it is helpful in an organization, what you might have also seen are some of the VPN networks as well, right? You might have seen softwares that say, okay, you install this software and then you can access a certain service that is available in a different country. So what is basically happening over here? You are the client and instead of connecting to this resource directly, which is in a different country, what do you do? You connect to VPN and then you would connect to this proxy server. Now this proxy server is gonna capture your request and then it is gonna transform it to send it to your resource. And now the resource will think that, hey, my request is coming from one particular country and this will respond. So this server will once again send back the information to you. So what just happened? This resource has no idea where you are coming from. So that is what VPNs are doing. And that is why you remain anonymous and you can protect all of your browsing history. This particular resource, they have no knowledge about you. Only this proxy server has all of the knowledge. So this is how a forward proxy works and you get all of these benefits. Basically, if you have to summarize things, a forward proxy is something that works on behalf of all of the clients. But why should clients have all the fun? There should be something for the servers as well, right? So a proxy that works on the behalf of servers, that is known as a reverse proxy. So Imagine the scenario once again, you have all of the clients available and they want to access a certain resource, correct? So this time the situation has reversed. All of my clients are on the internet, whereas all of my resources are on some private network. So you can try to think like this. You are working from home and all of these resources that belong to your company, 
they are on a private network, right? Now, if you're not an employee of the company, you cannot connect to any of these resources, right? So what do you generally do? You connect to a certain service and then you are able to access all of these resources. And this proxy is known as a reverse proxy. If you try to think the advantage of a reverse proxy, one of them is very, very obvious right now. So when you have this reverse proxy in place, you can define a list of all of the users that yes, only these users are allowed to access the resources on my private network. And these resources, they are close to the public. You cannot access them from the public internet. So you can make sure that only your employees, only they can get access. Because if a random user tries to connect to this particular proxy server, then they can get an explicit deny because this particular user is not allowed to access the service. So basically you are getting server anonymity. That means these clients, they have no information about the server they are connecting to. So just like we got the client anonymity in a forward proxy, we get server anonymity in a reverse proxy. And since you do not have any information about these servers, you don't even know the IP address. So you protect your system from a lot of attacks and a DDoS attack is one of them. So a DDoS attack simply means that you constantly try to bombard a server with a lot of requests and expect that it will fail. If you have no knowledge about that server, how will you make that attack? So this reverse proxy is helping you with that DDoS attack. Along with these security features, this reverse proxy can give you some optimizations as well. Because you know that all of these clients, they will connect to this reverse proxy server, right? So what you can do is you can implement some sort of caching over here. And then you can serve these clients faster, right? And similarly, this reverse proxy can also act as a load balancer. So based upon the request, it can determine that which server the request should go to. It looks easy on paper, but the complexity of implementing such a system can get very tricky. It gives you added latency because instead of connecting to the resource directly, you have a middleman in between. And because of this middleman, you also have a single point of failure again. So it is always a good idea that whenever you are adding components to your design, make sure that you add them in such a place that you can account for the follow-up questions because it is guaranteed that you will be asked a question on it. So don't just add a component because you know about it. First, talk through your interviewer. First, try to think the design in mind. Think that the advantages that you're getting. And the general rule of thumb is that if you have a lot more advantages than the disadvantages, then you implement that system. Then you add that component to your design. So just be cautious about all of these optimization techniques before actually adding them to your design. So while going throughout the video, did you face any problems or what other use cases have you found? Just tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This really keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well. For my upcoming videos, I will be covering some of the most essential components of system design. For example, what is consistent hashing? What do you mean by distributed messaging systems? How do you make a GUID? So all of these are upcoming videos. Stay tuned for my next video. Until then, see ya.